So this morning, I emailed my friend Annie Kessler to tell him he wrote a fabulous piece on this anti-capitalism. And I mentioned that I had been calling it woke economics. And he mailed me back, go woke, go broke. I love that. Go woke, go broke. On that note, I turn to our market aces, David Bonson, the Bonson Group Managing Director, and Peter Marisi, University of Maryland economist. All right, gentlemen, um, Peter Marisi, what happened today? What happened? Well, I think that last week was a very bad week for the Fed and for President Biden. I don't think that Mr. Powell was convincing anybody that this was temporary. I mean, consumers are complaining in the conference board survey that they expect inflation to last over the next year at about 5%. Businesses are feeling all kinds of stresses they don't expect to resolve very quickly. And then over the weekend, you know, Friday and into the weekend was all this drama with Facebook about communications about COVID. I mean, really, the Delta strain should be quite handleable, as we just heard. But are the American people, our markets, our investors, our businesses, our consumers confident in this welfare administration? I don't think they are. And I think that what we had today was a vote of no confidence. Okay, very interesting. Actually, the, if, correct me if I'm wrong, the market went down quite a bit on Friday, did it not? Yeah. I, I think that's right. So you're saying as a carrier. We had, we had the testimony and then we had the, all the drama on Friday. This has been going on for about three days. All right, it's an interesting point. David Bonson, go woke, go broke. Is that playing a role in this? That's a brilliant poem from the brilliant Andy Kessler. Let, 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 me, let, let me push back a little, though, on, on the great Peter Marici's point here. The Dow and the S&P are right now higher than they were 30 days ago. OK, so that's after this. What was at one point nine hundred and fifty point drop today, 300 on Friday. There's a lot of skittishness. There's a lot of issues right now. I think today was mostly technical, Larry, traders that were overdone in their short bond and long reflation trade. And they're having to unravel that a bit. Yields have come down. The short covering has been big. It was a very bad idea for people to be shorting bonds, assuming yields were going to fly higher. And that trade has walloped some hedge funds and algorithmic traders. But I still agree that there are issues out there that people are not fond of with some of the administration's intentions. I just think most people don't care. They're shrugging it off. Businesses are still going forward. Industrial production number is good. Uh, business investment needs to be better. It's not going to be like it was in 2017 anytime soon. But I'm much more optimistic as long as Manchin holds the line. Joe Manchin, that's the key to this. Manchin and cinema, so we don't uh, go woke and go yeah. broke. But Peter, you've got positives. Look, profits are booming. There's no question about that. And the economy across the board is generally pretty strong. Now you've got a 10-year bond, Peter, that's under $1.20, under 1.2%. Oil's down to $66 a barrel after today's sell-off. That's a good thing if it stays down there. And King Dollar is very solid, which is really interesting to me. King Dollar is very solid. And Steve Forbes says that's because the Fed has actually taken cash out of the economy, some of the excessive cash. So there are positives, are there not, Peter Marisi? Absolutely. If we take the fact set forecast for the second quarter profits of about 60 percent year over year, that takes the S&P price earnings ratio back down to the historical averages, so it's not overvalued. Uh, and I don't think that Mr. Biden is going to be able to get all that he wants. Simply, in the Democratic caucus, there are a lot of people that are pushing back on a lot of these taxes. Uh, if we start to see the Fed talking about higher interest rates, uh, then we have to start pumping those into the uh, CBO's forecasts for the deficit and so forth. And my feeling is, is that it doesn't become workable. He won't be able to get all this stuff that he wants, uh, like most administrations, and the economy will go forward and will continue to move up in the market and be quite happy. So therefore, David Bonson, I'll give you the last word, 20 seconds, buy the dip. Is that what I'm hearing? By the dip, especially with energy and financials that have Ooh. gotten beaten up a little bit more. Some of this stuff is back on sale, my friend. OPEC Plus is uh, pumping more oil. Now, Biden wants them to pump, but he won't let our companies pump. But at least somebody's yeah. pumping more oil. Does that change the energy story yeah. real fast? 
Yeah, no, it, it, it's a it's a missed opportunity for sure. The midstream folks in the U.S. should be uh, transporting oil. Our pipeline should be full. This whole thing is frustrating because we have a chance to gain market share internationally and we're not doing it. Yeah, good point. It's also worth noting Paris Climate Accords. We've already beaten the 25 uh, percent reduction. Anyway, David Bonson and Peter Marisi, thank you very much.